interesting is attractive, it's fun, and it should not be one of the top qualities you look for in a man because it really will restrict your dating pool considerably and largely restrict it to a bunch of mansplaining narcissists. Hey, welcome back to the Love You Podcast. My name's Evan. I'm really excited. Excited is not the right word. I'm really interested in today's podcast because the topic of the podcast is whether you are only interested in guys who are interesting. And I know it's a bit meta. It's going down a little bit of a rabbit hole, but I think it's something that's worth exploring because of the weight that we put on being interesting and how being interesting is also very, very subjective to your own interests. So I've got a client. She's graduated from La View. She's continuing with her coaching. She's probably in her mid-50s. And the biggest problem she seems to be having is that there are just no guys who are interesting to her. And I feel for her, for someone who wants to find love. And it appears that there's no one who could fascinate her. And she values that part of things highly. That's no small thing to find no one interesting enough to talk to, to start a conversation with online, much less continue to go out with. So you're not going to get anywhere as a dating coach telling everybody that they're wrong for how they feel. Everybody's entitled to their feelings. You're entitled to your feelings. I'm entitled to my feelings. But it does beg a number of questions. So all these things started firing in my brain. I started writing them down furiously when she started to tell me about her lack of interesting men in her funnel. Our funnel is the men she's cycling through online. So I first had to ask her, and I will ask you in jest, are you interesting? I know it's fun to talk to someone who is genuinely fascinating. There's a handful full of people I've met in my life where I don't even want to speak. I just want to listen because this person is so fascinating and just I can't learn anything if I'm talking at all. So I had a college professor, a guy that I really loved, who I stayed in touch with. And whenever I get to see him in town, I'll do 80% listening and 20% talking. There's a few podcasters that I listen to who I find really, really interesting, who have unique takes that make me think, I think those people are really special. Uh, most people though, I think are just kind of normal, ourselves included. And so I can understand why you'd want someone who's interesting and fascinating, who every word that comes out of their mouth, you're learning something and they're making you think and they're making you laugh. I see why that's desirable. I'm, I value good conversation probably more than I value just about anything. And at the same time, I wouldn't say objectively that most people are interesting. I think most people are nice. Genuinely, I think most people are nice, but I don't think most people are interesting. So I'd have to ask any woman who's saying, I want an interesting guy are you that interesting as well? Or do you just think you're interesting? Because I don't think anybody thinks they're boring. Very few people think they're boring. <laughs> so to me, interesting is very much in the eye of the beholder. If I know everything about a topic that you don't care about, electrical engineering, a bunch of engineers might find me really interesting, but you might not. And if you're really interested in the history of the church and that, you know, and you're a, th a theologian and that's a big deal to you, you know, that's maybe impressive. I'm not that interested in that subject. So I just want to challenge the concept of what interesting is first and foremost and ask yourself, are you as interesting as the man that you're seeking? Number two, when we're talking about interesting, one of the things that I do know about interesting is that interesting is not going to pay the bills in 40 years. Interesting is not going to keep you warm at night. Interesting is not going to wheel you to your chemo treatments. It just won't do that. Interesting is an attractive adjective. It's an attractive trait. It's not an important trait because we've outlined the most important traits. The ones that are important are the ones that are based on how he treats you. We've reduced them. There's probably more, but this is the gist of it, to character, kindness, consistency, communication, and commitment. Those five. And those are determined by how he treats you, how you feel in the relationship. Interesting is closer to tall or a great dancer or Jewish. It's a thing that we could turn it into a deal breaker, but the more of these deal breakers we have, the fewer deals there are. So is interesting attractive? Indubitably. Is it the most important trait for a relationship that nothing should get off the ground unless he's fascinating? I wouldn't say so. To me, holding out for a fascinating man is like holding out for a six foot four man. I just don't think there's that many of them available. 
And just because a guy is fascinating doesn't mean he's an ideal candidate. And that brings us to our next point. Think of the most interesting men. I asked my client who brought up the, I like interesting men. I said, think of those interesting men that you covet so much. Here you are on Zoom with me. You're 58 years old. How have things gone with those fascinating men? Oh my God, Evan. Like, I can't even tell you. Just narcissists and stubborn and couple bipolar. And you're really talking about the kind of person who loves to hear himself yap. And again, I'm guilty, so I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm conscious of that. But the guy who really likes to hear himself yap, he may be fascinating and he could tell you about Charlemagne and he could tell you about the lineup of the 1927 Yankees and he could tell you about the Spanish Armada and he could tell you, he could sp explain quarks. And nonetheless, it doesn't make him a good husband or partner. Is he going to let you sleep in after you had pulled an all-nighter with a baby? Is he going to rub your feet if you have a job where you have to be wearing heels all day? Is he going to take Christmas to go visit your mother instead of insisting you come to his? These things are not solved by interesting at all, even though interesting is good. But lots of traits are good, but that doesn't make for the most important things in relationships. So if you've noticed a correlation between brilliant, fascinating men and stubborn, arrogant, mansplaining, know-it-all <laughs> narcissist, you're probably not alone which might mean we should devalue that trait maybe just a little bit, certainly not overvalue it. Then there's the next point, number four. Interesting has less value in your marriage than you might think. And I realized that for the first time when I was in my early 30s. I remember talking to a guy who was an entrepreneur, venture capital kind of guy, really liked him a lot. He was in Maryland. We met at a conference and I asked him to tell me about his wife. And his wife was, the way he described her then is what I, my wife is like now. She had a career and then she became a mom and I was, a, a, I was able to afford everything. So she kind of became a stay-at-home mom. And I was still in my, you know, my early 30s and working this stuff out. And I said, how does that work for you? Like, don't you need someone who's like out there and has like this dynamic career, challenging and interesting and comes up with like cool cultural stuff for you to do? And this guy was like, you know, 10 years older than me or something like that. And I remember him like chuckling at me, like a, not condescending, but like a, I, I could see how you'd think that. And he said, the truth is that when you're together and you're building something in a marriage, the nature of your conversations is completely different. You're not staying up until two in the morning, like you were in college, arguing about the existence of God. You're mostly dealing with logistics. Okay. Did you do the grocery shopping? Right. Did you get the thing that I asked you to do? Oh my God, you forgot to pick up my prescription. Your mother's coming over next week. What are we going to do with her? Do we have enough money to spend on a vacation this year? Or do we just have to do a staycation or maybe something uh, uh, in a road trip? Oh my God. The, the, the car line at school today was brutal. Let me tell you all about it. Oh, the funniest thing happened with our daughter today. Most of the things you're talking about are really just present. What's happening on a day-to-day -day basis in your job, in your family, in your lives, that's most of it by far. So is it amazing when you could have a conversation that darts and weaves and have off the charts banter and feel that electricity? Sure. But it's different than being interesting. And right? it's different than being interesting. And I want to plant a flag and, and call attention to that. I'm going to talk about my wife and I. She's the, she's the people-pleasing person. She's the person everybody likes, everybody gets along with. I'm a little bit more polarizing, and I know that as well. You know, she's Little Miss Sunshine. Everybody digs her largely because she's not that controversial. She doesn't push the envelope as much. I describe my wife as round. We laugh about it. Not round physically, but if we talk about you know cool people as edgy, my wife is round. She likes pop music and Dave Matthews and, you know, bad food and McDonald's and nacho cheese. And she's, she's, you know, I think probably what we'd call basic. And I love that about her. She's not a snob at all. She's the coolest person on earth. But because her job is tending the house, she's not going to be on the internet as much to read about what's going on in the world. She's not going to have those kind of war stories. She's got the life of a single mother. So is that going to be the same kind of scintillating conversation I'd have with uh, an 
academic? Is it the same kind of conversation I'd have with a public intellectual who's a podcaster? Was that the same kind of conversation I, I would have with someone who's running a multinational corporation? No, it's a different conversation. But last night, my wife and I, we were, we were kids are gone. We were going to go upstairs and have uh, sex early. And what we ended up doing, and it was great, we just talked for an hour and a half and just caught up because, you know, we're both doing our own thing by day. And and sometimes when you're caught up doing your own thing, you you kind of pass. You might watch TV, but you don't really talk. I know we're throwing parties or we're traveling, but we're not really talking. So last night we just sort of laid in bed for an hour and a half and just talked and laughed. Were we talking about things that were fascinating? No, we were talking about things that were relevant to us. Who are we going to invite to our next dinner party? All right. And what are the challenges that my son's going to have growing up because he has my personality and, you know, how, you know, why is it so hard for guys to make closer guy friends? And it's something that impacts me and impacts, it also impacts my son, right? Why is it so hard to make good guy friends? Things like that, right? That doesn't require the world's most interesting person. And so like height and weight and age and education and income and religion and politics, where the, we could say these things are important. There are things that I want to ideally have in common. There are also things you could compromise on. My wife didn't hold out for a six foot tall guy. Her previous boyfriend was six seven. I didn't hold out for a Jewish girl. My previous girlfriend was Jewish. I didn't insist that my wife came to the relationship with that much money. She came to the relationship in debt. That was fine. What I gained was far greater than what I lost. And so when we hold on to things, like interesting, which have nothing to do with how he treats you and venerate them as the most important quality a guy could have. So no one could even get in the door unless he's interesting. We're elevating things that don't necessarily predict how he's going to show up in your life for the next 5, 10, 20 years. I'm not telling you to give up on good conversation. I'm saying what you talk about in a marriage is generally not the same kind of fascinating stuff that you talk about outside of marriage. And that this is definitely a point for compromise. You shouldn't be with someone who bores you where you want to slit your throat. I hope you didn't hear me saying that. I'm obviously stimulated by my wife and I think she's smart and I think she's funny. Right? But are there people who, by the nature of their worlds, have um, more more things where I just want to sit back and listen and shut up and, and, and just learn? Yeah, of course. I'm sure she has. she feels the same way about me. When I run into these things with clients, I feel like it's my duty to share them with you because my clients are special people, but they're not unique. Everybody runs up against this. I ran up against this. When I was single, I had a matchmaker who said, Evan, what are you looking for in a woman? And I said, give me a woman with the biggest brains. That's like, all, all I care. give me the one with the biggest brains. That's all I care about. She sets me up with a woman from Harvard, speaks nine languages. Didn't have much of a sense of humor. Boy, was she bright. Let's just make that distinction right here, right now, forever. Interesting is attractive, it's fun, and it should not be one of the top qualities you look for in a man because it really will restrict your dating pool considerably and largely restrict it to a bunch of mansplaining narcissists. With that, I bid you adieu. My name is Evan Mark Katz. This is the Love You Podcast. Thank you for joining me. I look forward to seeing you in our next installment.